Now at 10, authorities arrest a man in connection with this week's fatal hit and run in Joplin. Plus, the latest on the collapse of a wind turbine in Barton County, Missouri, and the mystery behind Pittsburgh sweatshirts that have turned up in a French department store. The four states most watched news starts now. Joplin police arrest a suspect in a fatal hit and run. This is KOAM News at 10. I'm Dow Quick. Authorities earlier today released an image of what they believe the suspect vehicle looked like, a dark colored 2002 to 2005 Ford Explorer SUV. Then later they followed a lead at an address in Duquesne where they found a vehicle matching that description. They contacted the owner, 49-year-old Ruben Blanco, and determined he was behind the wheel Monday night when 55-year-old Eva Havelock of Joplin was hit by a vehicle that fled the scene. Havelock died of her injuries yesterday morning. Formal charges have not yet been filed in this case. A wind turbine has collapsed in Barton County, Missouri. Take a look at KOIM's drone video of this scene. This is part of Liberty's North Fork Ridge Wind Farm off Highway 43. Liberty's communications director tells us no one was near the site when the turbine collapsed and no injuries were reported. The company says they've secured the site for safety. Liberty says it's assessing the situation and will provide additional details as they become available the company adds that the safety of the public and its employees are its top priority. Let's check in with meteorologist Tiffany Sabona for a first look at the weather. What a difference a day makes. The snow is gone. We topped out at 50 degrees at the Joplin Airport today, and things are quiet across the four-state area as we take a look at our Indigo Sky casino camera there. As the kids are getting ready to head back to school tomorrow, make sure they bundle up. It will be cold but sunny in the morning. Temperatures in the middle 20s, but then tomorrow afternoon will be even warmer than today. The clouds will be increasing, so we're not going to see as much sunshine tomorrow, but high temperatures will be topping out in the middle 50s. Soak that up because we are tracking the first Arctic blast of the season that will be arriving by the weekend. In fact, a wind chill watch in effect for our Kansas counties from Friday night into early Tuesday morning. Wouldn't be surprised if the watch was actually expanded to include more of the area. We'll let you know when wind chills will drop below zero degrees coming up in a bit. Back to you. See you soon. The Carthage Chamber of Commerce's first of its kind women's empowerment series is a new monthly set of luncheons leading up to the Women in Business Conference in May. Tickets are 12 bucks for chamber members, $15 for non-members. Each month, uh, luncheons will have a different theme and speaker to share her experience as a woman in the workforce. Empower them to lift them up, to hear other stories, and to be able to take all of these things that we learn today and carry them back home into our work so we can be better leaders, not only in our community, but in our workforce as well. The Chamber will announce the next luncheon speaker and topic later this week. Pitt State today welcomed its new international students. The university hosted a dinner for the students at the Presbyterian Church in Pittsburgh. It was a chance for the students to get a warm meal before classes start and helped strengthen the relationship between the students and the community. I think staying and being, being away from home and feeling like strange, a strange oh, from everyone else. But here is very welcoming with all with all, all the people, they're very welcome in here. Much of the food was provided by community members as well. A Pittsburgh, Kansas sweatshirt is being sold in a department store all the way in France. KOIM's Fernanda Silva spoke to the Pittsburgh resident who spotted it in the city of Lens. Pittsburgh resident Marco Ziocam was visiting his fiancée in France when he couldn't believe his eyes. You're walking in this store and suddenly you see a Pittsburgh sweatshirt. Yeah, it was really, really strange. I had to take a quadruple take, you know. It's really common to see things like New York and then it'll say like the Big Apple or something. I was thinking immediately, oh, it's probably Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And then I saw 
Kansas, and then I saw Midwest, and I was like, "That's my city. That's my town." The sweatshirt reads "Pittsburgh Midwest Greatest Town" with the correct spelling for the Southeast Kansas Pittsburgh, without the H. It also says "Sunflower State Kansas," but here's something interesting. They have the year 1993. And I have no idea what happened in 1993. The year is not the only mystery surrounding the manufactured sweatshirts. The why Pittsburgh is also an unanswered question. The area chamber of commerce hasn't heard of it before, but the organization's president believes it is something good.、Uh, but it really doesn't surprise me because、uh, Pittsburgh is pretty well known around the world. The example I used was if you were in Pittsburgh, Kansas, and you went to J.C. Penney's and you found a shirt that said "Lens France." Best town in the north of France. It's the same deal. I was just shocked. I was like, "Why Pittsburgh, Kansas, of all the cities in the United States?" But Marcus has a theory. Maybe, maybe some French student one time many moons ago came to Pitt State, loved it so much, and then they were promoted in Kiabi, and then they were like, "You know what? Let's make a sweater to sell." In France, that says Pittsburgh, Kansas. Spending his last couple of vacation days in France, Marcus will be heading back to Pittsburgh soon. With an extra item in his luggage, they're coming back home with a souvenir that is actually from your hometown. <laughs> exactly. I. It's funny. It's actually my first Pittsburgh, Kansas sweater, and I bought it in France. So, a souvenir that comes with fun memories in Pittsburgh. Fernanda Silva, KOEM News. I want one. The department store Kiabi also has the item listed for sale online for 15 euros or about 17 bucks. We tried reaching out to the store, but didn't hear back from them. We are unable to determine positively just how that Pittsburgh design ended up in that French department store. If you think you know, well, we'd like to hear from you. You can join the discussion on our Facebook page. The Joplin Airport now has a new way to detect threats and explosives. Meet Bubba, a one and a half year old English Golden Retriever. Bubba is the airport's newest bomb and explosive sniffing dog. However, he's not exclusive to the airport. Bubba and his handler can also help other area law enforcement agencies if needed. In a year or so, when he gets more experience, he'll be able to search without my pointing to him. He'll know where the productive areas are and search them. So it makes it very easy to go into. A, Uh, a building and 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 just get have him on leash and go go through a building and and search. Bubba is fully certified and officially on duty. When he's off duty, he goes home with his handler and gets to be a normal dog, a beautiful one at that. Coming up later in sports, a rivalry renewed as Frontenac and Pittsburgh wrestling at the mat. John's going to have details from the crosstown throwdown in just a few minutes. But up first, one more Republican contender drops out of the race for the White House. And on us for news and information. Let's drive. The number of Republicans running for their party's nomination to be president dropped by one today. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie pulled out of the race. It comes just days before the Iowa caucuses and New Hampshire primary, and the remaining candidates are pushing toward the finish line. Christian Benavides has the latest. We don't need another mealy-mouth politician. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley called each other liars in their first one-on-one -on -one debate in Des Moines, Iowa. In just five days, Iowa's Republicans will caucus and pick their nominee for president. If she says she's never said something, that definitely means she said it. And then she'll say, "You're lying! You're lying!" That means not only did she say it, but she's on videotape saying it. Every time he lies, Drake University, don't turn this into a drinking game because you will be overserved by the end of the night. CNN kept Vivek Ramaswamy off the debate stage, saying he didn't qualify. So the businessman candidate aired a commercial during the one-hour event, telling viewers to turn it off and turn this off. That same hour on Fox News, frontrunner and former president Donald Trump, who's refused to participate in debates, held a solo town hall event in Iowa. He railed against the U.S. immigration crisis. We are going to have the largest deportation effort in the history of our country. Thursday, he heads back to New York for closing arguments in his civil fraud trial. A judge ruled earlier the former president is not allowed to speak in court. 
Meantime, one of Trump's biggest Republican critics, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, suspended his campaign. And it's clear to me tonight that there isn't a path for me to win the nomination. I am going to make sure that in no way do I enable Donald Trump to ever be president of the United States again. Christie's exit could funnel more Republican support to Haley in New Hampshire. She trails Trump by single digits in a recent CNN poll. Christian Benavides, CBS News. Sources say Christie has no plans to endorse Haley, and before his announcement, he was caught on a hot microphone saying Haley is, quote, going to get smoked. He also said DeSantis is, quote, petrified. Pittsburgh Community School Board today held a special meeting to give an update on the search for a new superintendent. So far, they're looking at seven candidates. All of them are from out of state. They span six states. However, the board is still looking for candidates in Kansas as well. We want that, that person that, that is a good communicator, you know, a good, honest person um, that can communicate with everyone from classified all the way through our certified staff. Um, you know, good with numbers for our budget, obviously, because money's all, that's a big deal. So that, that that's key. But uh, we just want that overall good person, good communicator, you know, knows curriculum, knows our budget, things like that. The current USD 250 superintendent, Richard Profit, is going to retire on June 30th. The Children's Miracle Network received some financial support in the new year. The Joplin-based Legacy Credit Union today presented this Great big check for more than $7,000 to the CMN. This is the 24th year for the partnership between Legacy and the Children's Miracle Network. Tiffany's next, and a little bit later, a Purple Dragon signs her letter of commitment. John's going to have the latest on the Pittsburgh standout, creating Splash with her move to a university in Kansas. Open for the four states. Good evening. We have a very active weather pattern ahead that will bring us the first Arctic blast of the season. So now is the time to prepare. We're tracking two storm systems. The first one arrives tomorrow night into the day on Friday. Second round is Sunday into Monday. That'll be the stronger storm system. Both systems will bring us a chance for snow and wind chills below zero degrees. So let's get right into it. The energy with our first storm system moving across the Pacific Northwest, this is a very dynamic storm system. It will dive off to the south and move into the southern plains as we head into tomorrow night. So tomorrow will be dry during the day, sunny to start, cold, and then temperatures will be rising into the low middle 50s at ahead of our next storm system, but the clouds will be increasing. Now the rain won't move in until Thursday night and there could even be a couple of thunderstorms out there. Wouldn't be surprised if areas south and east of Joplin, so southern Missouri and into northwestern Arkansas, we see more thunderstorm activity as we will be on the backside of the system the farther north and west you go. So Thursday night into early Friday morning, we'll see showers, a couple of storms, and then as the colder air wraps in behind the system, the rain changes over to snow. But here we're going to stop the clock at 6 a.m. on Friday, wide variety of temperatures across the map. So it really depends on where you live, what you're going to be seeing when you're waking up. Pittsburgh over to Joplin, we have rain temperatures in the 40s, but across portions of Kansas, it's already snowing and accumulating. We'll see that changeover start to shift eastward throughout the morning hours on Friday. We have snow falling Friday around lunchtime, temperatures in the 20s, wind chills during the afternoon in the single digit so travel could be a bit slick during the day on friday with the snow coming down and visibilities could be reduced with that wind out there it could be quite gusty we're not talking about a lot of snow with this first system we could see an inch maybe two as some of the higher locations for some of our eastern spots by friday afternoon the bigger story will be the bitter cold and the wind chills below zero we're going to skip ahead to the coldest days. So Sunday morning, here the future feels like temperatures. This is what it feels like when you're gonna step out the door Sunday morning. Wind chills, 15, 20, 25 degrees below zero. Monday morning, 
same story. Wind chills, 20, 25 degrees below zero Tuesday morning. Not quite as bad if you can say that, but wind chills still minus 15, minus 20. So we could see wind chills below zero degrees Sunday, Monday, and into the day on Tuesday all day long. So several consecutive days here of the bitter cold expected. So we're dry Thursday, storms possible Thursday night, especially south and east of Joplin. Snow and wind make it a potential alert day on Friday. Minor accumulations, but travel could be impacted. Saturday, we're in between systems. The stronger system could bring us some higher accumulations Sunday into Monday. And that's where it gets really cold, dangerous cold, with highs in the single digits teens, lows below zero, and those wind chills well below zero as well. Back to you. Tiffany, thanks. A merchandising company is leaving Fort Scott, Kansas. Value Merchandisers Company is closing its facility. City says the decision is driven by a new automated system and cost-saving measures. This closure follows the announcement that Temkin Corporate Communications is also leaving Fort Scott. The city plans to develop training opportunities for all the affected workers. Still ahead, a Pittsburgh high school swimmer commits to the University of St. Mary and highlights from the fifth annual Crosstown Throwdown between Frontenac and Pittsburgh. John Dales has those stories and more up next. Family member in need. Terrell and soon. Hey, welcome into sports. I'm John Dales. There are several rivalries you might know about in the four states, Pitt State and Missouri Southern, Webb City and Carl Junction, Parsons and Labette County. Today, another one gets renewed, the Crosstown Throwdown between Frontenac and Pittsburgh Wrestling. Pittsburgh's entire student body in attendance for the Crosstown Throwdown as Frontenac visits. Wrestling at 106 pounds, Pittsburgh's Evan Antony wins by fall against Frontenac's Mark Stroud, that gets the pack crowd fired up. Next up, 113 pounds, Chris Pickle for Frontenac. He gets the win by fall over Muntasir Manzer. And at 144 pounds, Tyler Bailey taking on Ethan Jones. Bailey wins by fall for Pittsburgh. Then one of the most impressive things that I saw today at 157 pounds, Wyatt Frazier hurts his arm early, gets it checked by the trainers. He recovers to win by fall over Ashton Botter. Close battle all the way throughout. The Raiders and Purple Dragons tie, but because of an unsportsmanlike penalty against Frontenac, the Pittsburgh boys win the 2024 Crosstown Throwdown 34-33. And it was awesome. We got the win, uh, keeping the trophy at home. Uh, gives a tough front neck team, so really proud of my guys. Man, the atmosphere was great, man. It's really exciting me when we wanted to host an assembly duel for a while. This is our first time doing it, so couldn't have went better. Very busy day at Pittsburgh High School. As the Crosstown Throwdown is going on, elsewhere in the building, a Purple Dragon senior signs her college commitment letter. Ava Steyer of Pittsburgh High School signs her national letter of intent to join the women's swim team at University of St. Mary in Leavenworth, Kansas. She spent her high school swimming career at Fort Scott because Pittsburgh doesn't have a swim team. And Steyer is grateful that Fort Scott gave her the opportunity to get to this point. I am looking forward to just growing as a swimmer and I feel like swimming just really helps to build my confidence as a person too and just everything in general. So I'm looking forward to just going and seeing where it can get me. Blessed with the opportunity to go swim with them because we don't have a program here in Pittsburgh so being able to go there is just awesome and I am very grateful for that and they have Coach Maddie and everyone has done everything to help me become the swimmer I am today. In the NFL, more firings happening in the last day for head coaches and coordinators. Shocker out of Nashville, Titan head coach Mike Vrabel fired after six seasons with three playoff appearances. Each of the last two years, though, they've finished under 500. In Seattle, Pete Carroll reportedly out after 14 seasons as the head coach of the Seahawks. He brought Seattle to two Super Bowls and 10 playoff appearances. 
Then in Chicago, the Bears retain head coach Matt Eberflus, but fire offensive coordinator Luke Getze. Chicago 10 and 24 in two seasons with Eberflus. Over in the NBA as well, one more score. The Thunder win tonight, second in a row on the road. I know we had that announcement about them yesterday. They are just a half game out of first place in the West. Yeah, and once again, people will be able to watch some future Thunder games on KOAM and Fox 14. That the they WB. will. We'll be right back. World has a lot of An active pattern ahead. Tomorrow is dry, warm 54. Showers and storms move in Thursday night. Change over to all snow on Friday. Friday with the snow and the wind and the cold, a possible alert day. And then the bitter cold really arrives as we head into the weekend. Sunday and Monday, that system stronger. We could see wind chills well below zero from Sunday, Monday into Tuesday morning. And then the weather pattern becomes much quieter as we head into next week. Tiffany, thanks. Labette County High School in Kansas today hosted a welding competition. More than 500 area students from more than 20 high schools participated. For one student, that many competitors made for a nerve-wracking situation. Knowing that you have 175 kids coming to your school and you're competing against them, whether they're seniors, juniors, freshmen, sophomores, it don't matter. You know you're going to have to compete against them. It's a little nerve-wracking, but uh, it's, it's all mental, honestly, I think. I mean, you just got to know what you can do and do your thing. You don't have to do too much. Just do what you can do. Students were judged on different types of welds, metal preparation, and cuts. You know, careers come and go, evolve over the years, but welding, that is one practical skill that you think would be around for the foreseeable future anyway. Yeah, seems like it. I'm not much of a welder myself. I don't know about you. <laughs> Neither though. am I, but yeah. we need those, those <laughs> True. welders. Final sports note. Yeah, tomorrow our uh, college basketball team's back in action. Missouri Southern and Pitt State both at home, and the Missouri Southern women riding a six-game winning streak. Good for them. Thanks for joining us. Morning show starts at 5 a.m. Let's make it a great tomorrow.